most of my vlogs show BTS in the moment, out in the field. But realistically, I only work seven to 12 days a month, so there's a lot of downtime. So in this vlog, I'm gonna show you guys more of the micro decisions that I make over multiple days, maybe even a week or two. You can see what the process is like for a freelancer who needs to fill his time, or honestly, sometimes I just need to kill time, and uh, just how I go about doing that. Just got out of the dentist, time to do my buddy's podcast. I love seeing people who like are pushing their own momentum forward and having like a three, four, five person podcast is definitely something difficult. Lately, I've been saying the same phrase over and over again. I got it from a fisherman. He said, action brings action, meaning when he starts to stir up the water, when he's catching a fish, all the other fish start to come around and see what's happening. And it's really the same thing with the video world. If you see someone who's making their own progress in action, it just naturally brings you around. And this podcast was one of those where we met because we're all doing projects and we can relate on that. Parking meter isn't working, so I'm gonna assume it's free. I gotta return um, this extension cable that was for the job I did recently, and uh, it ended up coming too late. So the company who shipped it to me, the company who hired me said, we sent you a prepaid shipping label. Can you send it back to us? Yeah, this is a very exciting time for me. and I really like having my future in my hands right now. I like being this morning, I had a great consultation call with Guerin, who is a videographer in the Bay Area, and he's pushing more into the combat and corporate space. So I was able to offer a ton of insight, kind of let him know these are the things that have uh, given me issues in the past, and these are things that took a long time to learn. And I love that as a YouTuber, I can monetize off of my information and provide value to these callers. The best thing that I hear every single time is, I'm glad I did this call. I'm glad I invested in myself. So if you want to call, feel free to reach out to me. We can schedule you. Hope you have a great rest of your holidays and happy new year's. Man. Cool, bro. Same to you. Happy holidays. Favorite spot. This is their cinema cameras they're selling and they have had that C100 for a while, this C300 for a while, and an FS7. But they finally got in a Gemini. That thing looks beautiful but for fifty five hundred dollars you could definitely i think you could definitely get that cheaper online but and i wonder how much uh the guy who sold this bought it for originally because i know he took at least a twenty thousand dollar hit camera looks great though and then we got i mean we still got a boxer engine right Poor man's Porsche. Life is good. We got a cranky cameraman vlog up. I scheduled two consultation calls. Christmas decorations are up. Returning the Fuji to a friend who let me borrow it. Realizing I need another kind of pack organizational system up front and that'll actually help secure in the camera and then I can load my batteries and handle in there but it just needs to be a little shorter than that. This is a V-mount from a company that said, do you want a V-mount? And I got that email a few months ago and I said, no, I don't, I don't need it. I don't want it. Um, but then I got this light. I previewed this in the last vlog, the Gina Ray Bright Beast. It's basically an LED panel that I can put onto uh, just a small stand so that I can have remote uh, power because my other two lights the 200x and the 60d both require wall outlets and there's just been so many times where i wish i had uh, something that i could just pop up and get some light the obvious answer to that would be okay just get the 300d get any of the other single chip lights uh, but then you get a ballast and i just i just want a fast option i want to keep these premium batteries from core that have the, the bells and whistles that I paid for, like this LCD display. Um, they're kind of like industry standard accepted. Uh, got some USBs, all this other stuff that I don't wanna, I don't wanna put different batteries on the camera, but I would love some different batteries for that. I asked for three, they said no. <laughs> so they gave me one battery and I actually have a long six day job somewhere in Florida planned in January 
and that light or that light is most likely really going to come in handy so that battery will come in handy as well i made my documentary about something that i like it was about mma and i just so happened to kind of know someone in there that's how i got my in and the promotion that i work for likes me working with them so they kind of like throw stuff at me they've given me backpacks uh, with their branding on it full jumpsuits of sweatpants sweaters um, shirts and it's just stuff that I cannot wear because it says stuff like only a fighter would know and I'm not a fighter um, although I would love to have the technical knowledge and reflexes so after that MMA documentary which was uh, in 2021 had the little festival circuit I was able to train with the main guy just in his garage and he was showing me stuff kind of as like uh, hey you know thank you for making this I'll give you some one-on-one -on -one practice and it was really good I uh, did it for a few months learned went from learning nothing to actually having a little bit of awareness but tomorrow is the day that I'm actually going, going to sign up for a real MMA gym and not gonna lie very scared because I don't know how things are gonna go who's gonna be in a bad mood the cool part is is I'm getting like my hand held basically the owner of the promotion said I'll go in there with you um, we'll get you set up and I think basically what he's gonna do is train with me the first uh, you know a couple drills and stuff that we do and then hand me off to someone who is uh, not gonna drop me and just having that little bit of network makes it so much easier to do rather than just cold walking in and that's one of the cool benefits of just the filmmaking thing is you get networks inside filmmaking but also whatever world you decide to explore whatever documentary genre or subject you're now in that too I implemented this system to hold my earbuds a little while ago I wanted to just speed up the process of Oh, I need to have audio. Let me go into my bag and plug my headphones in. That doesn't take a lot of time, but if I don't have to do that, that's even less time. So I decided let's always have my earbuds connected. We'll just plug in here and use this really nice small rig clamp to put it on and off with one hand. And so far it's been working fantastic. I really, really do like it, but I'm always unsatisfied essentially. So I'm like, oh yeah, but this cable kind of kind of goes right here and that might affect this and or now it's in the way of the media door. Very, very minor inconveniences. But like I said, it's, I'm never like done with my rig. Um, so I decided let's reroute and fix that problem. So I'm always trying to get the cabling and stuff off of the operator side over to here. And I did that recently. This is my power cable that comes from these ports. And it was routing up through here, covering the tally light and then going along this way. So I just simply moved it over, which frees up the, the tally light visibility. It goes through here, under, and then up to the monitor. So follow that same vein. Now we are gonna have the headphones clip in here, and then it's gonna go to the right side of this battery through the tilt-a-plate. There's a little hole right here and follow along the bottom to right here. Now, it's not covering the audio gain door anymore. There's no uh, impediment on the media door, and I still get to see the tally light. So these small things make a difference to no one. It does not increase my day rate or anything, but it just makes me a little happier um, and essentially a little easier to work. Now for my XLR situation. So I have right angle XLR cables, which is great because a lot of times when people have their camera, they have cables that are just protruding really far out. And then if they're really strong cables, it takes a while for them to turn. And that loop can just wreak havoc. It can like grab on doors. It can, you know, grab whatever. So I like the right angle adapters. These are both in the, the description. Um, with links and the cool part about this one um, I think it's from cable techniques but if you take a really small allen key there is one screw here and then there's another one right there 
If you loosen both of those up, you can actually change the orientation of where this cable comes out. So here I just put it right above here. That way I can loop it once and then have it go actually in through the mic holder because I have the little um, rubber gasket that Sony needs and the wire actually feeds right through that gap. So I get to keep the wire inside of here. Same deal. It comes right here, right angle. Um, you can also change this one if you wanted to change the orientation. And then the 3.5 mil to XLR, I just always keep here. I loop it in and then it kind of like holds itself. And that is for my lavalier system. So right now I have some kind of like older road filmmaker lavalier kits. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's the ones that are about this tall. And uh, that's fine for the receiver, but for the transmitter, um, when people are putting it on their pocket or their waistband, it really sticks out. It pushes the shirt out. It's an eyesore. It's very visible. Um, and I've been looking into the Sony UWP lavalier um, receivers, transmitters, two-in-one, which would be great because they don't plug into any of your XLR ports. They send signal via the hot shoe here. So I could get more audio tracks. Um, but I recently used the Rode pros which is the basically it's the road go but with some better features and i can leave that in here have it connected it doesn't change the height of the camera meaning i can just drop this camera into my bag with a full audio system ready to go it's just it's just super small and compact so i'm deciding between those two products right now if you guys have experience with those i know dji has a similar product as well um, let me know because when I used the Rode Pros, they were fantastic and I have not used the Sony UWPs yet. It's finally winter in Florida. We got a brisk 65 degrees out. I have an empty morning where I can just chill and enjoy no work today. So that usually means get a lot of admin done and uh, low urgency items on my to-do list. Okay, they just told me to check the contents, make sure everything was there. This is much smaller than I thought. Uh, we max it. We max it. Energy 99. Uh, the one thing that I liked, uh, and I'll talk about it in a later video. This is not the review video, and this is not a knife either. It's a letter opener. All right. So they asked me, like, if we send you this, what are you going to talk about? And I just said the same thing that I told you guys. Um, but well, maybe this will be the review video. No, I mean, it's gonna be integration. I will I will show it on multiple videos because I'm gonna use it actually. Um, but I liked that you can do USB-C charging because uh, right now, whenever I need to charge my V-mounts, I have to, I had to buy the expensive core two battery and ch dual charger setup. This is great. Um, on and off switch it just like feels like it's gonna get the job done really well uh you know if you if you fully charge it'll stop sending power so things like that are nice but convenience is also nice and this has usb-c usb 3.0 and you can charge via usb-c and that is uh one of the things that i'm gonna take advantage of and then here's dtap and more detail. See, this was an issue when I was when I was buying these batteries, these expensive ones. I I was like, no, it's got to have two D taps, and it needs to have the screen. And they're like, uh, I don't know, they were like two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars each, and I have three of them, so it's an investment. And then this one um, is this price. I don't know. I don't remember. Didn't cost me that, gave it to me for free. Um, but that's much more manageable uh, than that. And I can get multiple ones of these. I actually kind of like this because let's say I did run it on my camera. I can kind of put this in if I was holding my camera like chest mounted. Whereas those have like a really hard edge that can kind of like dig in. So I do like that. Uh, and then just normal V-mount on the back, pins on the bottom and 
What is this? Aha, see, and then now these cheaper ones are including a LED screen with percentage of capacity remaining, voltage 14.6, and a diagram of levels. And I wish these came out a long time ago because uh, I'm gonna test them out on the lights. But if they work fine, um, then I'll feel confident enough to test them out on my camera. Uh, I just love how other people are, other manufacturers are taking the good parts from products that are working and then just make it better and cheaper. That helps all of us. And I think it spurs other companies to be like, well, what else do we add? Because what Max it is making a product that is just as good. Let's see if an iPad charger will work. I have this for my outdated iPad that I got for free from a client. There's a total benefit to being a little micro influencer. You get some cool stuff. Uh, it's working. Easy enough. Just plugged it into to an outlet. And all I have to carry is this cable. This is so much easier than that sucker. That thing takes up a lot of space in here. If I, if I had multiples of these and I just had three cables, I mean, yeah, that'd be great. Just a few minutes before another consultation call and I'm using a Zoom solution provided by Peter Mokri. So this FX6 signal is going out through the Elgato cam link into my computer. And then the way I can get the caller's feed to be right in the teleprompter so I can see them this was so smart is he said, just use your Hollyland transmitter to go from HDMI out and send it to the Hollyland app. That way, boom, I get picture and I get to use the battery that Wimaxit gave me to power this because uh, I, I think this is low on battery. So USB-C, easy enough. This is the second call of the day and uh, the, I'm, I'm really liking this setup. Thanks, Peter. I always like it when you know, people can share their strategies. Now I get callers all around the world, but mainly it's from the US. And I'm thinking I could actually provide value to myself if I created a database of everyone who has called in because I have knowledge of who they are, what services they offer, their skill level. And there's so many times when a crew member falls out or we need an extra hand in a certain city and my network is growing via these calls. So far so good. That was really Huge. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. That is like. And then I actually got hired for a last minute job through the art of documentary. AOD is a online student course type of deal, but the real value is they connect people and they showed a really good documentarian who made a film and he's just an hour or so from me from Tampa. We connected that way. He came to one of my meetups and then he had a job coming up that he was double booked for and he said, uh, you know, I just thought of you because I always see you on YouTube posting. So that tells me the value for uh, me continually putting myself out there. And so I shot this little charity run for him while he was doing a wedding and that's just how I continue to get more jobs. It's through a network and, uh, you know, putting myself out there, trying to make it in a non-cringy way, but really just marketing myself. I'm always talking about speed and efficiency. So this is one of the things. Take the camera and I get to just throw it in there and keep moving. I'm on the ball of my foot. Turn. I'm right back. Oh, yeah. I'm right back. 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 I'm right